Once upon a time in ancient China, there was a remarkable period known as the Han Dynasty. It emerged after the fall of the Qin Dynasty, when a commoner named Liu Bang rose to power. Liu Bang, also known as Gao Zhu, aimed to undo the harsh policies of the previous regime and govern with compassion and fairness. The Han Dynasty is split into two main periods, the Western Han and the Eastern Han. This division occurred due to the rise of a regent named Wang Mong, who briefly interrupted the Han rule by establishing the Sin Dynasty. However, this new government didn't last long and the Han Dynasty soon resumed. Emperor Wu, one of the most famous rulers of the Han Dynasty, played a significant role in shaping its legacy. He transitioned the state ideology from legalism to Confucianism and initiated various reforms. Emperor Wu's reign marked a period of prosperity and cultural flourishing. He even facilitated trade with the Western world by opening the famous Silk Road. Under the Han Dynasty's rule, China saw remarkable advancements in various fields. Many inventions that we take for granted today, such as the compass and paper, originated during this time. Additionally, the Han Dynasty revived the cultural values of the earlier Zhou Dynasty and promoted literacy and historical study. However, as time passed, corruption began to seep into the imperial court. Eunuchs gained significant power, overshadowing the authority of the emperor himself. This corruption eventually led to widespread discontent among the people. In 184 CE, the Yellow Turban Rebellion erupted due to grievances over high taxes and famine. Although the Han Dynasty managed to suppress the rebellion with the help of military generals like Cao Cao, internal conflicts soon arose. Cao Cao himself became embroiled in a power struggle with other commanders, leading to the fragmentation of the empire. Finally, in 208 CE, the Battle of Red Cliff sealed the fate of the Han Dynasty as it marked the beginning of the Three Kingdoms period. With its fall, the Han Dynasty left behind a profound legacy that continues to shape Chinese culture and identity. As the Qin Dynasty's oppressive grip tightened, the people longed for a change. The previous Zhou Dynasty had seen its own decline, leading to the chaotic Warring States period, where regional powers vied for supremacy. Among them, the state of Qin, under the leadership of King Ying Zheng, emerged victorious through a ruthless policy of total war. Ying Zheng proclaimed himself Shi Huangdi, the first emperor, and established the Qin Dynasty in 221 BCE. Initially, he seemed to uphold the mandate of heaven, governing with the welfare of his subjects in mind. However, his reign soon turned oppressive and tyrannical. People were conscripted into forced labor, freedom of speech was stifled, and books contrary to Qin ideology were burned. Upon Shi Huangdi's death in 210 BCE, his weak successor, Qin Er Shi, struggled to maintain control against mounting rebellion. The noble Xiang Yu of Chu led the uprising and ennobled a commoner named Liu Bang as King of Han. Liu Bang, later known as Gao Zhu, accepted the surrender of the last Qin Emperor, Ziying, showing mercy towards him and his family. However, Xiang Yu's ambition clashed with Liu Bang's, sparking the Chu Han contention. The conflict culminated in the decisive Battle of Gaexia in 202 BCE, where Liu Bang emerged victorious. Xiang Yu, facing defeat, chose to end his own life. With Xiang Yu's demise, Liu Bang became the supreme ruler of China, founding the Han Dynasty. His ascent marked the end of the Qin Dynasty's tyrannical rule and the beginning of a new era of governance. As the Han Dynasty unfolded, Gao Zhu, the founder, faced both internal and external challenges. Initially, he rewarded his loyal generals, Han Xin and Peng Yue, with great estates and autonomy. However, suspicions arose, leading to their execution, perhaps influenced by his ambitious wife, Empress Lu Ji. Gao Zhu sought to establish a government that balanced central authority with regional autonomy, drawing from the decentralized system of the Zhou and the efficient governance of the Qin. He divided the realm into administrative districts and granted kingdoms to his family, hoping they would govern justly. Aware of the Qin Dynasty's misuse of power, Gao Zhu prioritized the welfare of his people. He lowered taxes and opened bureaucratic positions to all classes, fostering social mobility. After Gao Zhu's death, Empress Lu Ji controlled the throne through puppet kings. Her reign of power instilled fear, allowing her policies to go unquestioned. However, upon her demise, the nobles seized control, ushering in a new era under Emperor Wen, considered one of the most effective rulers of the Han Dynasty. Emperor Wen's reign marked a period of stability and cultural advancement. However, 
challenges persisted as the power of regional states threatened imperial authority. Emperor Jing, Wen's successor, faced the rebellion of the seven states, prompting him to centralize the government and curb the influence of regional rulers. Emperor Wu, Jing's son and successor, pursued expansionist policies and extensive reforms. He empowered the lower class, curtailed noble greed, and expanded the law code to ensure equality. Despite opposition from the nobles, Wu implemented his reforms, including the adoption of Confucianism as the state philosophy. Wu's reign also witnessed significant territorial expansion, defeating the Xiongnu in the north and annexing territories in Korea and Vietnam. He initiated trade with the West through the Silk Road and promoted the cult of the Queen Mother of the West, inspiring philosophical and religious discourse on immortality and the meaning of life. Legend has it that Wu met with the Queen Mother of the West, gaining wisdom for his rule. This movement marked the first recorded messianic millenarian movement in Chinese history, influencing beliefs about life after death and ultimate meaning. As the Sin Dynasty crumbled under the weight of Wang Mong's misguided rule, chaos engulfed China once more. Wang Mong's idealistic but impractical governance led to widespread corruption and discontent among the people. Frustrated with his ineptitude, a mob stormed the palace, ending Wang Mong's reign in a violent manner. Following Wang Mong's demise, a weak prince named Lu Xuan briefly occupied the throne, earning the title of the Gengshi Emperor. However, his reign was short-lived, overshadowed by the Red Eyebrows Rebellion, which ultimately led to his downfall. With his deposition, the Eastern Han period began under Emperor Guangwu's rule. Emperor Guangwu moved the capital back to Luoyang and implemented reforms to stabilize the empire. Despite his efforts, the subsequent Han emperors fell into a pattern of decadence and neglect. Emperor An indulged in pleasures, leaving governance to palace eunuchs, while Emperor Shun's corruption incited rebellion. Emperor Huan's laziness and incompetence further weakened imperial authority. As the eunuchs and corrupt officials wielded political power, the Han dynasty faced external threats from raids along the borders and costly military campaigns in Vietnam and Korea. The generals stationed in border regions grew increasingly powerful, undermining the emperor's control. Amidst floods, famine, and oppressive taxes, the Yellow Turban Rebellion erupted in 184 CE, further eroding imperial authority. Though the generals ostensibly quelled the rebellion in the emperor's name, they acted in their own self-interest, weakening the central government even more. One of these generals, Cao Cao, sought to unify China under his rule, leading to the pivotal Battle of Red Cliffs in 208 CE. The defeat of Cao Cao marked the beginning of the period of the Three Kingdoms, as China splintered into Cao Wei, Eastern Wu, and Shu Han, each vying for dominance and claiming the Mandate of Heaven. As the Han Dynasty drew to a close, its legacy as a beacon of innovation and cultural advancement remained unparalleled in Chinese history. From its humble beginnings, the Han rulers embarked on a bold experiment in governance, seeking to strike a balance between the trusting policies of the Zhou and the oppressive measures of the Qin. Inheriting a vast empire stitched together by the brute force of the Qin and the lost territories of the Zhou, the Han dynasty faced immense challenges. Yet, amidst these trials, they fostered an environment of innovation and creativity among the people. Music theory, the seismometer, paper, the water wheel, these were just a few of the remarkable inventions and developments that emerged during the Han Dynasty. Across disciplines such as mathematics, medicine, cartography, and astronomy, the Han made significant contributions that would shape civilization for centuries to come. The Silk Road, a marvel of commerce and cultural exchange, provided a direct link between East and West, facilitating the transmission of knowledge, ideas, and values. Yet, despite their ingenuity and achievements, the Han Dynasty eventually succumbed to the weight of its own greatness. As the empire expanded, the central government struggled to govern effectively, while later emperors abandoned their duty to the people, indulging in luxury at the expense of their subjects. The period of the Three Kingdoms that followed was a tumultuous era of violence and uncertainty, reminiscent of the Warring States period. It would take many years for stability and unity to be restored to China. The Sui dynasty, with its reforms aimed at addressing the weaknesses that led to the fall of the Han, would eventually usher in a new era, building upon the foundation laid by one of China's greatest dynasties.